In a compelling first public appearance since she was released by Iran last week, Nazanin Zaghari Ratliff has said it should never have taken the UK six years to secure her freedom. Speaking at a news conference at Westminster, the British Iranian national, who'd always denied charges of spying, said that the Iranian authorities had told her they wanted something from the Brits before she could be released. Last week, the UK government settled a £400 million debt to Iran, dating back to the 1970s. But Britain and Iran have claimed that the two events are not linked. Our diplomatic correspondent, Caroline Hawley, has the story. Out of the darkness, into the spotlight. For six long years, she was silenced. It was her husband who had to speak for her of the psychological torture she endured, the agony of being separated from her daughter. But today, at last, Nazanin Zaghari Ratcliffe got to have her say. And she began with some important thank yous. My amazing husband, who has been uh, tirelessly campaigning for me, so thank you so much. And my daughter for being very, very patient with mummy to be coming home. So I am so grateful. At this point, Gabriella, who's seven, is much more interested in the games on a mobile phone. Nazanin flew home in the early hours of Thursday morning, along with another British national, Anoushe Ashouri, after the UK repaid a long overdue military debt. But she wasn't keen to give the government any credit today. I was told many, many times that, oh, we're going to get you home. That never happened. So there was a time that I felt like, do you know what, I'm like, no, I'm not even going to trust you, because I've been told many, many times that I'm going to be taken home, but that never happened. I mean, how many foreign secretaries does it take for someone to come home? Five. It should have been one of them eventually. So now here we are. What's happened now should have happened six years ago. She didn't want to answer questions about the detail of her prison ordeal, including solitary confinement. It will always haunt me. I, I always felt like I am holding this black hole in my heart all these years. Um, but I'm just going to leave that black hole on the plane when the plane lands. I'm not going to live for the rest of my life with a grudge over the past six years. Um, can I ask how you felt as you walked down the steps of that plane of Bryce Norton? Is it too early to say what the future now holds? Um, it's very early to, uh, to, to think what is going to happen next. That moment was precious. I have been waiting for that moment for such a long time. And I was overwhelmed, um, specifically to get to know Gabriella uh, and Richard after such a long time. It was a very, very emotional moment. Um, but, uh, but I don't know. We will, we will see what, what happens in the future. I think it's too early for me to, to think about that. I'm just enjoying the moment at the moment. At Nazanin's request, the daughter of a British-born Iranian left behind in Tehran was there too. Murad Tabaz is a 66-year-old wildlife conservationist serving a 10-year term who thought he was part of the deal that brought Nazanin home. Roxanne Tabaz made a direct appeal to the government. To Prime Minister Johnson and Foreign Secretary Truss, we beg you to please stand by your word and bring back both of my, my parents, my father and my mother. Uh, I believe that the meaning of freedom is never going to be complete until such time that um, all of us who are unjustly um, you know, detained in Iran are reunited <coughs> with our families. Her own family will, she made clear, keep her grounded now. Gabriella told me on the phone one day, I was still in Iran, that, Mummy, you do realise that you are very famous, and then it's me and then it's Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. And then I said, okay, you know, it's not good to be famous because, you know, you want to have a normal life and, you know, just to have a... Have a... And she was like, oh, you're not going to be famous forever. Maximum a week. So we're bracing ourselves for a week of fame and then we're just going to have a normal family. And with that, she was off to start a new chapter in her life, away, the family hopes, from the public gaze. And uh, Caroline is with me. Uh, remarkable, Caroline, really. Some humour, very emotionally charged at times, and yet... She pulled no punches in the way that she analysed the way this had been handled. That's right. Very moving for the journalists who were there and for everyone watching. She was so dignified, so calm, so composed, so clear in her quiet anger that it had taken the government so long, six years, to sort this out and get her home. When Iran had always been clear that it wanted something in return and that something was the military debt. Now, her husband thanked the Foreign Secretary Liz Truss, but she pointedly didn't. Also, what came across is the very keen sense of injustice that she'd been subjected to 
by Iran and in Iran. My life was linked to something that had nothing to do with me, she said. And there was also a real sense of the six missing years of them as a family. Nazanin kept looking over at Gabriella throughout that press conference. And she spoke of how good it was to hold her daughter again, to do her hair. She spoke of how she was looking forward to meeting her daughter's friends and also to do a very basic thing. It's something that many of us take for granted, and that is the school run. Indeed, Caroline. Thank you very much again. Caroline Hawley there, Diplomatic Correspondent.